मैं कुछ बात कहना चाहूँगा सर आपकी बात सुन के और प्रोफेसर श्रीवास्तव और जो टीम जिन्होंने बहुत अच्छा काम किया है मैं अपनी तरफ से कुछ एक कंट्रीब्यूशन करना चाहता हूँ मैं यूनिवर्सिटी को दिल्ली टेक्नोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी को अपनी तरफ से एक करोड़ रुपए इस बात के देना चाहता हूँ कि वो बिजनेस क्लास का प्रोग्राम को सपोर्ट करें और इसके अलावा जैसा हम यहाँ पे चैलेंजेस की बात कर रहे हैं तो मैं अपनी तरफ से क्लीन एयर पैटर्न जैसा आप जानते हैं वो मेरा पर्सनल टॉपिक है और दिल्ली सरकार की तरफ से और यूनिवर्सिटी की तरफ से यहाँ पे हम बहुत सारा काम कर रहे हैं मैं एक करोड़ रुपया उसकी तरफ भी देना चाहूँगा कि हम लोग क्लीन एयर की तरफ काम करें और शुरुआत करें थैंक यू धन्यवाद सर मैं पहले डिप्टी चीफ मिनिस्टर श्री मनीष सिसोदिया जी का धन्यवाद करना चाहती हूँ उनकी ओजस्वी उपस्थिति ओजस्वी शब्द हमें बहुत ऊर्जा से भर देते हैं साथ ही साथ वो हमेशा असाइनमेंट से भी हमें भर देते हैं इस विश्वविद्यालय का पूरा प्रयास रहेगा कि उनका दिया हुआ असाइनमेंट हम भर सक कंप्लीट कर सकें और हम उनके पास फिर दोबारा जाएंगे कि हम अब अगले असाइनमेंट के लिए तैयार हैं थैंक यू सर और धन्यवाद है विजय शेखर शर्मा जी का जो उन्होंने अनाउंसमेंट यहाँ से जेनरसली की है तो विश्वविद्यालय उनका बहुत बहुत आभारी है डॉक्टर जी सतीश रेड्डी इज द सेक्रेटरी ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ डिफेंस आर एंड डी एंड चेयरमैन ऑफ इंडियाज डिफेंस रिसर्च एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विच स्पेयर हेड्स इंडियाज इंडिजिनस डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ डिफेंस सिस्टम्स एंड टेक्नोलॉजीज ही गाइड्स द डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ मेजर प्रोग्राम्स ऑन मिसाइल्स एंड स्ट्रेटेजिक सिस्टम्स फाइटर एयरक्राफ्ट एंड अनमैन एरियल डिफेंस सिस्टम्स अंडर वाटर सिस्टम्स रेडार सिस्टम्स स्ट्रैटेजिक मटीरियल्स आर्मामेंट्स एंड फ्यूचरिस्टिक टेक्नोलॉजीज एज डिरेक्टर आर सी आई ही लेट द डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ क्रिटिकल टेक्नोलॉजीज फॉर आई आई आर सीकरस आर एफ सीकरस इंटीग्रेटेड एवियोनिक्स मॉड्यूल्स एंड मैनी सच इनोवेटिव सिस्टम्स फॉर ऑन बोर्ड एप्लीकेशंस एज डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ मिसाइल्स एंड स्ट्रेटेजिक सिस्टम्स ही स्पेयर हेडेड the development of missile systems like bmd nag qrsam rudram long range guided bomb etc india's maiden successful test of anti satellite missile mission mission shakti was successfully executed under his watch he was involved in the development of air defense system bvram astra akash MRSAM LRSAM QRSAM the world's longest range gun ATAGs anti radiation missile smart air field weapons smart bombs and missile assisted torpedo release systems under his guidance in the ongoing fight against covid-19 pandemic nearly 50 technologies for combating covid have been developed and 75 products have been transferred to 100 industries he is the first indian in over 100 years to be conferred with honorary fellowship and silver medal by royal aeronautical society london he has received <laughs> numerous other awards including american institute of aeronautics astronautics missile system awards the aeronautical prize national systems gold medal national design award iei ieee award for engineering excellence and homi jahangir bhabha gold medal dr reddy has been conferred honorary degrees of doctor of science for by many leading universities in the country for his significant contribution in his field of technology development and promotion of scientific pursuit may i now invite dr reddy for convocation address please namaskar and very good morning and good afternoon to all of you <clears throat> we had a very motivational speech from the honorable deputy chief minister how the university should be <clears throat> how we should be growing and what our aim should be to make the universities as one of the world's best universities here and such a motivational speech to you and support from the government of delhi also we heard the inspirational speech from 
Vijay Shekhar Sharma ji. And uh, in fact, I think all the words came from his heart while he was speaking, what should be, and after that, what he has declared from himself, what it will be, he will be doing for this university, a great uh, thing. Congratulations and <laughs> appreciation to that. At the outset, let me thank uh, the Honorable Vice Chancellor for inviting me to be here in this convocation, eighth convocation of Delhi Technological University. Uh, which is a very prestigious institute as Delhi College of Engineering or as a university now, which has produced many eminent personalities, lots of, I was been going through that, many people, and there are many people who are working in DRDO also, who are doing their best in DRDO. In fact, uh, Couple of students from Delhi College of Engineering have directly worked with me for more than about a decade, who have contributed in the success of DRDO in a big way. I am proud to be here with you in this uh, university delivering this convocation address. Also, my heartiest congratulations to all the students who are graduating today uh, from this university and who are walking into the society with the knowledge imparted by the learned professors here. I always say that it's a proud and joyous moment for all the students who are graduating and walking out of the university. We all see everyone uh, generally jumping outside, throwing the caps and things like that and all that. But friends, I was mentioning some time back also when you go out and when you excel yourself, when you achieve something, that is the day when the university feels happy about you. <clears throat> the same thing would have happened with uh, Vijay Shekhar Sharma also. When he was walking out, university would have seen him as one student who is going out of this university. But today, all of us are proud of his achievement. That is what university looks to his students that they should achieve something in their life and become great personalities. Friends, uh, having come to the technological university, let me say something about technologies, where India stands and where we should be and how we should go towards that goal. After the independence, India has been uh, slowly trying to establish itself both in academic institutes and in a technological front, building some of the infrastructure and some R&D has been happening. But from 1970s and 80s, started developing technologies and systems with great personalities, whether Homi J. Baba or Dr. Kalam, and various other people and that is the time when we started seeing the systems. Particularly in the space, we have seen that SLVs and then slowly coming to PSLVs and from 19th onwards, 1990 onwards, the systems actually started demonstrated. The first satellites have been launched, the first missiles have been launched and 70s and late 19s, we could see the nuclear tests, what have happened in the Pokhran. So consolidated the technologies and started moving towards the systems. And look at ISRO, the PSLV, they have launched in more than 50 in series without even a single issue anywhere, consecutive successes and putting lots of satellites in the orbit particularly in the low Earth orbit, maybe sometimes carried multiple satellites, even more than 100 satellites in one launch vehicle, creating records in the world. And we could uh, develop our own GSLV, the cryogenic engine, which is not available to India. We developed it ourselves. And then the GSLV taking the satellites to 36,000 kilometers altitude and putting in the geostationary and geosynchronous orbits. 
then we have a successful chandrayaan mission we are on successful mangalyaan which very very few nations in the world could do it and isro is aiming at gaganyaan very shortly putting man in space very few nations have achieved this type of a things and isro has done lots of things and made the india to stand as one of the few nations who have done this similarly in the atomic energy lot of activities have been done the nuclear power which is supplying to the civilian society today are the nuclear tests which have been done which made as a deterrent for the india security and many other things in the materials and development which are required and reactors and what not and all that the department also has excelled as one of the few nations who have developed this i don't want to get into too many details about this particular department coming to the department of defense r and d with the dr apj abdul kalam leading the missiles program as integrated guided missiles development program started with uh, as i said in the late 80s with prudhvi and then agni missiles which have been converted as prudhvi has become prudhvi 1 prudhvi 2 and dhanush the same agni which was tested in like 1989 has become agni 1 2 3 4 5 going to the ranges of 5000 kilometers uh an intercontinental ballistic missile and then the surface to air missile akash nag anti tank missiles astra air to air missiles the ballistic missile defense programs all that have put india into the elite club of very few nations and also talking about the supersonic cruise missile brahmos in fact that was the dream of dr kalam when we work were working there he used to call us when uh, you launch prudhvi or agni then we were becoming one of the six nations and seven nations in the world who have developed that capability he used to ask hey guys you have been doing this and when are you going to give me that you are the first in the world who have done this and under his leadership itself that is how brahmos has come as a indo russia joint venture giving the names of remar brahmaputra and moscow river in russia brahmos a typical indian astra name and that brahmos has been developed with a real technological partnership the engine and systems uh, coming from russia the complete avionics going from india and that missile that day was the only supersonic missile in the entire world that india and russia jointly made a supersonic cruise missile now which is actually gone into all the services and similarly when you look at we are developed our own fighter aircraft lca now tejas which indian air force has given 83 numbers which is the single largest ever order on hcl making the total number as 123 and we are one of the six nations who have developed a fighter aircraft of this class in the world we have developed our own main battle tank arjun which is again one of the six nations who have developed their own tanks we have developed electronic warfare systems we have developed our own avac systems we have developed our own sonars torpedoes and now today we have developed a gun which is 155 mm artillery gun which has the world's longest range this is the longest range artillery 155 mm class gun which along with the two industries drdo has done with bharat forge limited and tatas and the gun is going to get inducted very soon into the armed forces we have developed for a submarine air, air independent propulsion which actually only one nation in the world has developed till now and we are one of the we are one more nation who have developed now today <laughs> lot of things the mission shakti what she has mentioned some time back which is the anti satellite uh, test which has been demonstrated 
by directly hitting the satellite in the space, we are the fourth nation who have done it after America, Russia and China. India is the fourth nation which has done this type of a exercise. So many technological achievements which have happened in the last, I say about three, primarily three decades and lot more are getting developed. But friends, these are all need to say that we have the capabilities and we have the energies and we have the necessary brains here to develop those things. It is the endeavor, as again the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister was saying, the self-confidence and putting your targets in that and need to work on that. I say that all these technological developments what I have mentioned or what we are achieving today have been achieved as a technology follower meaning somebody else develops also and then in couple of years later or five years or ten years later we develop that and we become self-reliant. So this is not what everyone, the leadership of the country is looking for. We should be technology leader, not a technology follower. And we need to develop the systems first before anybody develops. This is what is required for the country today. So we need to work on lots of new technologies and science which are required. And the most important is the universities and institutes in the country which need to work on the technologies which are required for tomorrow or day after tomorrow. We need to work not after somebody coming out with that research. We need to do that core research in the academic institutes. Any country, if it has to be technologically or in science and technology, it has to grow. The universities have to be very strong. This is the most important thing, the fundamental thing. And as again, uh, Sisodiaji was mentioning, our rankings in the international university standards have to go up. See, today, friends, we have to accept that I don't think we have even one institute or university from the India which is ranked in the first hundred. And we need to have those things. What I mean to say is, if we don't have in the first hundred a academic institute, and how do you expect to develop the first of its kind systems in the world? So this is what we need to concentrate on that. The core research need to happen it here in the academic institutes. And we need to develop that infrastructure and that culture in the universities. That is what is most important thing today. And we started working in that direction. DRDO today has 10 centers of excellence in various academic institutes. And we are working with about 300 academic institutes, including Delhi Technological University, over a number of projects. And the, the budget on this is about 1,000 crores working with these academic institutes. Lots of research in various subjects. Of course, it's mostly connected to the defense and it will also have a civilian application. So this is number one. Number two, you people who are graduating today, you are the most important people who are going to decide the future of the country tomorrow. So firstly, you have to decide what you need to do. You may be continuing your academic studies or you may be joining a research institute or you may, or may be joining a job, or you may be opening an industry and you want to work yourself on that. This is one thing. Second, when you are setting your targets, I again repeat what uh, Dr. Kalam used to tell to the children, dream, dream, dream. Dream that you want to become a great engineer or a great doctor or a great lawyer or a great politician or a great uh, me or an actor or what not, whatever it is, think that you will achieve something great. And the dream makes you start working with making you not sleep. You start working on that, you work continuously very hard on that. Rather, another way, you think very big. Think that you are going to achieve something which makes world look at you. And you are 
a single person who has standing very tall before everyone. That is what you need to think big. Unless your targets are set very high, you won't be able to achieve great things. You should not be thinking incremental. Actually, when you stretch yourself that I can do something very, very great, what you don't normally think, think that you can do much, much, much more beyond that and you have that capability, you have that mind, what you can do that. So this is what is very, very important. Actually, when I was in Hyderabad, the, I'll tell you one incident. There were very, uh, uh, I say that it is very inspirational thing. There was a DGP, Director General of Police of the complete state of Andhra Pradesh, who was son of a constable. He just set his goal when he has seen his father when I should study and become the chief of the police of the state. And there was a managing director of transport corporation. He was son of a conductor of a bus. He also set his goal that I should become the chief of this entire transport corporation and he became. Both the people were simultaneously there. See the zeal in that two children who have set their goals that we should become the top of that entire organization and that is what we need to do. That is what actually Kalam has done. Actually Dr. Kalam when he came to DRDL, we were working on, I think I didn't join also by that time, they were working on a single missile which was not successful, there was no single missile. But he went to the Honorable Prime Minister at that time saying that I will develop five missiles simultaneously, you give me an approval. See the guts what he had, see the goals what he had. He also came from a small house of just I think three room house in Rameshwaram. And then took up the program and then made all of them successful and set his goals higher and higher and higher and went on. That is what is required that we have to set our goals and work towards that. And friends today, particularly if you are starting an industry or startups and all that, there are lots of facilities which government is creating. We should exploit them and use them. In DRDO itself, we have a scheme called technology development funding. If you have a good idea, you think that you can design that system which is useful to defense and or even dual purpose and you present to that and if you feel that it is a viable thing, we are funding 10 crore rupees to that particular startup or industry. And if you don't have any industry, you tie up with the incubation center in Delhi Technological University, we give 10 crore rupees for making that idea or to become a prototype. <laughs> we are making our test facilities open to you. We are making our labs open to you. You have the design and happening. You go to the respective laboratory. We work with you. We help you and come out with that. And so many other things are happening. And this product, after realizing, the armed forces will buy from you. That is also a commitment. Because these ideas we present, or we give the problem also, we see our website, there are problems well defined. There are more than about 120 problems which are there in the website. If you can work on that, and armed forces have already declared that we'll be buying, so you have a production continuity also. So this is what is required. We have a contest called Dare to Dream, and you participate in that and then the best ideas which are selected again are rewarded and converted into TDF and 10 crore rupees can be funded to you for making that idea into a reality. So likewise there are many other opportunities from various other departments. I am only talking about the defense research uh, side what we can do it. So there are many opportunities for the people. In fact the trend has changed now. The five to seven years back or before five years Every one, in, independent of the department, they used to join information technology or ICT, information communication technology. I went to NIT Warangal sometime in 2014 and went to the metallurgy department. There were 40 students who graduated, 34 were there joining IT, information technology from metallurgy department. Now the trend has changed. Youngsters are working on materials, they are working on composites, they are working on composite engines. They are working on propulsion systems. There are more than 56,000 startups which are registered with DPIAT today. There are many people who are working. That is what is required. Come out with innovations. See, 
Friends, the country can become prosperous today only by technology. We have to lead by technologies. We have to make advanced systems. We have to make innovative systems. Innovation is one of the important thing today. And that is what actually makes our product to be sold all over the world. Today, we have to sell our products in the entire world. That is the only way the country will become prosperous. We can't be looking for market within India. So we have to make the products for the world. The make in India is for make for the world. That is what is the most important thing. If we have to make for the world, and if the entire world has to buy the product from us, the product should be an advanced technology product, or innovative product, at a lower cost, and with a good quality, sustained quality of the product. This is what is required. And that is what makes us stronger, and gives the strength to us. And friends, I want to tell you, when you are strong only, people will be actually appreciating you. Else, they will not be appreciating you at whatever it is. I want to tell you before, when we launch Agni 5, before that, many countries were saying that India doesn't have that capability, they were making small missiles. When we made Agni 5, the same people, one, one nation said, we know that India love is, loves peace and this capability, they use it for peaceful purposes. Another country said, no, 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 it is not 5,000 kilometers, it has got more than 8,000, 9,000 kilometers capability. And they started appreciating and giving us more and more capabilities to us. So when you are strong, people appreciate you. So we need to become strong. And that is what is required today. And so, all this can happen from the universities, from r and organizations like us, and you are going to be the future industrialists and startup uh, entrepreneurs. We all need to work together. Universities, r and organizations, and industry synergetically work towards advanced technologies and the products of that nature which world is attracted to. That is what is required. I am sure that all of us will be able to do together job. And you people, when you walk out now from this uh, university, you will be able to great, do great things and make the nation proud, make DTU proud. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Jai Hind. Namaskar. Thank you, Dr. Reddy for your words of wisdom for the graduates. I'm sure that this house must be feeling proud and thrilled to hear about various technologies and the missiles developed by India and the research going on directly from the man sitting at the helm of affairs. May we have a big round of applause 